Hi there. So today is Tuesday, December 7th, and oops, I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure that this makes it week 48 of the Return to Creativity weekly updates with your hostess Jennifer Vanderbeek of scrapsoflife.com. And yeah, I just peeked at my files and yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it's week 48. <laughs> Hi, how are you? We're getting close to the end of the year and brains are scrambled. So first things first, do you peep what I'm wearing here, folks? I'll stand up so you can get like a full view. Move my chair. Um, Ta-da! This is the Magical Thinking um, Pullover Shawl by Casapanka, and I finished it. Yay! It is very soft, very warm, and it's Unlike a lot of other shawls that I've knit, <laughs> I'm like, ah, how do I wear this? Whoops. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, I just knocked something over, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> these things happen. Now, um, unlike other shawls that I've knit and I've been like, okay, how do I wear this? Um, this one is really simple because it just, it goes over your head and then it's just a matter of arranging where you want the, 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 the diagonal part or the, the arrowy part. Um, I suppose I could put it in back and kind of have like a shorter, here, let's try that. Let's try that. We'll just kind of turn this around because we can, we can do this sort of thing. I know it looks like I'm getting undressed. I have a shirt on underneath. We're cool. We're cool. But no, so I could have like a round kind of shawl in front. And then I could have the point in the back. Of course, I could also wear it the way I was wearing it with the... It's meant to be worn with the point off to the side. And, uh, of course, you have to worry about placement. <laughs> the designer even put in the pattern notes, notes that um, one should be aware of having the point direct to, you know, keep the point from, you know, directing attention at um, one's chest assets <laughs> or of course i could wear it the other way where it's just it's centered in front and it kind of looks more like a a, a traditional poncho um, but it's got this great cowl neck you could actually i think i can yeah i can actually kind of pull it up over my head a little bit and you know still be fine if i wanted to cover my ears while i was wearing it or something it's really cool it's a very very versatile pattern it was very, like I said, I think I've said before, it was very, it was a very good thing to knit while I was traveling because the repeats, the individual repeats are fairly simple to keep up with. You don't have to concentrate a lot on it. It's not one of those patterns that, you know, you really have to work at. Um, it just, it takes a while. It, it takes a while. It's a lot of stitches, but I'm really happy that it's finished. All right, moving on. Another piece of show and tell. Um... So yeah, this was definitely creative. Um, well, this is another of uh, the, uh, the culmination of weeks, years in this case, <laughs> of creativity. <gasps> My book. Yes. Behold. Behold the physical copy of Fool's Paradise <gasps> in print. And if you have ordered your copy, ebook or print, I'm sorry about the typos. I'm really sorry about the typos. I started looking through the print copy and reading it myself, and I'm like, dog on it. There's like two typos at the beginning of page two. <sighs> I swear it, and I know this happens with 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 all print books. I mean, things slip through, but it just bothered me so much that they happened on page two. And I, and I, th I don't even think they were like horrible. It was just like, oh my gosh, really? I did that or I didn't catch that. Um, so yeah, I'll be going through and uploading um, a, a, an amended copy to Amazon. That's the, the beauty, however, of um, print on demand is that I can't do anything about the copies that have already gone out, but I can fix them for future. Um, for both print and ebook. So yeah, I was like, mm. I did also find another, I mean, I found a couple of other typos, one of which, and I don't know how I managed this one. Um, and I, cause I know it was, I mean, mm. 
it's bugging me. There was actually a, a one in a piece of dialogue that actually changed the meaning of the sentence. And I'm like, oh my gosh. <sighs> but anyway, anyway. <laughs> coffee break. Anyway, so I've been hard at work writing book three, which actually this, okay, we'll go for another piece of show and tell. This is part of how I'm organizing book three. Book three um, has so many, so many characters, so many, so many potential suspects. There's Oh, it's a lot. And, and I was trying to keep everybody straight and I use, I've been using these, um, you know, I've been using the little, um, project life cards that I had left over from a scrapbooking project, <laughs> um, because they were there and rather than go out and buy fresh note cards, why not just use the pretty ones that I have? There's no rule that says I can't. So I did. Um, and when I was finishing up book two, I ha was using them to write down scenes and stuff, scenes, snippets, and like things to jog my memory as I got to them. And I just kept them on a little, a little ring um, because it was just a handful. But book three is more complex, at least from the writing standpoint. I hope it will not, well, I mean, you know, yeah, we want the mystery to be complex. Um, and I guess there's a few mysteries <laughs> There's a, there's a few trains to follow or, or tracks to follow. Um, there's not just the who done it, but the, the, you know, there's, there's a deeper why there's a deeper of who was involved kind of thing. And that's what I'm having to keep track of. And I decided that I basically did a good old fashioned murder board. <laughs> it looks a little bare right now. Cause I, I made sure to get a big um cork board because i know i will be adding more stuff but i just needed to be i mean i mean the first two columns those are all like the some of the people involved and they're not even like my main characters um they're not mary Catherine. she's she's not on there because i don't need her on there necessarily but and then i had to like organize like the subplots and 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 stuff and it was just like i need to see this and yes i realized there are actually programs out there that will do that for writers i mean they will allow you they'll even make it look like little post-it notes or index cards or whatever and you can move them around it's not the same i need to be able to touch them i need to be able to write things down stick them on there move them around myself <sighs> it's analog it's old school but it's what works for me. And that's really, I mean, any writer will tell you it's what works for you. <laughs> and if they say, no, you have to do it one way. Well, screw them. I, you know. <laughs> but book three, sort of on hold for right now, at least the first draft. I really thought I'd have it done by now, but I didn't. Um, I went through... My beta reader feedback on book two. And thankfully, overall, it was positive. Again, I am so grateful to have beta readers who, you know, who, who, who under, I mean, I guess, <laughs> I guess what I'm really grateful for is that I wrote a story that was understandable, that, that did not have so many, um, plot holes and and confusing bits in them there were a couple of things there's always going to be a couple of things and this is why it's good to get um multiple opinions but i'm so grateful to my beta readers um for pointing out what is working and what isn't working um i had a few things that honestly i there was like one reference in there that i had it was discussed in the original draft of the story but then when i was editing i realized hey wait a minute no that doesn't make any sense we have to pull out that section and then i never explained that thing that that section explained in a more realistic logical way so i had to go find a way to you know i was like oh yep i didn't go put that back in there i gotta do that um and then there were a couple of like loose ends that i was tidying up but so 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 I've done most of the uh story edits now. 
um, took care of the majority of those last night. Um, actually, no, I think I took care of all of them. Now I'm down to like proofreading nitpicky crud again. And since, like I said, there was a typo on page two that I didn't catch in the final, in the final edit, um, I'm doing something that I didn't do for book one, which is I am print, I printed out a second proof copy of because usually i'll just print out the first draft so that i can do like the maiden story edits and and rewrites and stuff and i go ahead and you know that's what that's what this big old bad boy was for so that i could do a lot of edits you can see all my sticky notes all my notes and you know it's single it's double spaced single sided so that i can put things on the back of the blank pages for when I need to write out new scenes or noodle something out. This was the first draft that got edited. Usually I will edit everything else on the computer. Well, clearly that didn't work. So I did a down and dirty, um, single spaced, um, two, uh, double sided print, just, you know, just so that I can look at it and find, hopefully, find those things. Would I love to use a professional um, copy editor, editor, proofreader? Of course, of course. But I'm in that, I mean, starting up on a shoestring, this is how it goes. You do the best you can with what you've got. Um, I'd rather pay for beta readers that are going to tell me, um, and it is much more economical to to have a paid beta reader than I have a paid editor. Um, I'd rather ha pay for beta readers that are going to tell me if the story works and use other tools to help me proofread the, you know, uh, proofread and edit and, and do technical edits, copy edits. Um, overall, that worked okay <laughs> for book one, except for the few I missed. And they stood out more, even though I, I sat there and I like read from the screen, they stood out more when they were on paper. So I'm hoping that book two, printing it out this way, will help me catch those things again. And yes, I will be marking up a copy, one of my <laughs> such copies, to find the rest of the mistakes in Fool's Paradise and get that down. Now, the reason why book three is on hold and book two is the focus right now is because I have to get it uploaded this weekend. Um, if I want to keep to a December 15th release date, which is my target, I have to have the files uploaded by December 11th, which is Saturday. Today is Tuesday the 7th, so I got some work to do, but I'm, I'm, I'm still feeling like it's possible. Um, if I run into a roadblock, then I will have to make a decision no later than Friday to push the, uh, release date back for, um, book two for magic beans that's the name of it um a week i mean i could push it back however long but i want to I'm, I'm still trying to keep it reasonable so i'd push it back a week as i understand it you can change a a um release date for a pre-order uh once in its lifetime once for each uh pre-order so yes um and i actually do have a pre-order which is kind of cool um thank you to whomever pre-ordered uh the book um or book two, but I'm doing my dog honest to, I mean, the cover is designed. I've got a workable blurb, you know, it, it yeah. yeah. So I just need to get these tech edits done, fill in the last things and do the formatting. Oh, I also have to, um, draw and design the cover for book three so that I can, you know, put it in the back of the book with the blurb to, yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. That's, I've got a plan. <laughs> and I've got a backup plan. Um, so yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's where we're going. Um, what else has gone on in this last week? Oh boy. I don't know. Um, yeah, I just... Oh, I'm trying to remember. It, the last week has just been a blur. Um, and I think it's just cause I had my head down in book and coloring book stuff. Oh, coloring book stuff. Um, I have three more pages to draw for the winter whimsies coloring book. 
I realize that today is the seventh. I realize I have a lot of um, written, you know, prose work to do. So artwork, yeah, it's a, ju- it's, I'm juggling. I am juggling. I am going to get those three pages done today. Um, and then as soon as I get Magic Beans edited and uploaded and all that stuff done, um, then I will lay out and format the uh, coloring book and then it will be available online as well. Um, again, everything's through Amazon. My coloring books are available. If you look under, if you look up the name Jennifer Vanderbeek, um, you will find my author page with all of those. If you want the, but there is a slight difference for my novels. Those I have listed under J L Vanderbeek. So my initials J L and then Vanderbeek. Um, Jennifer J is in Jennifer. L is in Lynn. If, if y'all don't know my middle name, it's Jennifer Lynn Vanderbeek. Um, yeah, just, just to kind of, just to differentiate them enough for Amazon to know that, okay, these are the cozy mysteries, the people who read these, these books are going to be interested in the, these things. People who buy the coloring books or the cookbook, which, oh my goodness, thank goodness that I, I, I'm almost, I'm almost sad that I did not put up that I did not get a a second edition of the cookbook up sooner because having it on Amazon is doing exactly what I thought it would do. It's making it way more accessible, way more people are finding it. And I keep seeing orders processed for it. It's not like an onslaught. It's not a deluge, but it is a steady, oh, okay, there's another one. There's another one. There's another three. Um I suspect part of it may be because of, um, you know, the upcoming holiday season, maybe people are giving them as gifts. If they are, oh my gosh, fabulous. And if so, then I'll see a drop off of orders in January and February, but that's okay. I'm, I'm prepared to see that if they don't drop off, then I'm just going to be absolutely floored. But, um, yeah, yeah. I'm even floored at how many like page reads through Kindle fool's paradise has had, I don't think there's been any reviews yet, which, hey, sometimes no reviews is, <laughs> is good because that means nobody hated it enough to um, to put a bad review. But, uh, you know, <laughs> we take the sunny side of the street on this one. Anyway, um, so, yeah, that's what I've been up to. That's what I'm going to be up to. And... I'm just plugging along right now. I have got the the local Christmas parade was last night. We did go. We actually kind of had like a picnic on one of the 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 benches downtown and you know just before and then watched the parade and it was nice. It was so sweet. That is the part of Christmas that I love. Just everybody, you know, just having fun. Having fun, being in a good mood hearing the marching bands, even though I had to hear all I want for Christmas is you at least four times. Still, I, I, it doesn't bother me. doesn't bother me. <laughs> but um, I've also, I've got one of the book club parties tomorrow night or Wednesday night. I've got Todd's work party this weekend. And then I've got two more book club parties next week. And oh yeah, I mean, it's just, it is that time of year. Everything is going on. And um, of course, everybody, please, I know you've all got the same, you know, potential things coming up. Be safe, make good choices for yourself, do the best you can. And yeah, try and try and carve out some time for yourself because it is nuts outside. It is crazy outside. Um, you know, everything is is we're all trying to get back to some semblance of normality, but it's not well, we're still not there. We're not there. And but at the same time, add on the holidays and trying people trying to recapture that holiday feel that might have been missing in the past year. Um and just, you know, make sure you've got room to breathe. Make time for yourself. And aside from that, have a creative week and I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>